Hey fellow YouTubers, welcome back to Land of the Wombats. It's your pad old Uncle Chris here again, here to share some off-grid lifestyle stories for you. And this week I've been working on the solar power system and there's no dog stay because we're up on the roof. Woo! It's pretty exciting. And um, yeah, it's quite a long way up off the ground, especially when you're looking down there. And what I've been doing this week is replacing these junction boxes for all the solar panels with sturdy metal boxes. These are all powder coated, they'll last for a super long time. Now the solar panels were put up um, about 16 years ago and whew, it's quite windy up here isn't it? <laughs> Bit exciting. They put up 16 years ago and the plastic junction boxes that we use are a bit crap. Let's be honest about it, you know, plastic up in the sun and the wind and the rain for years and years and years it degrades, it's no good. Um, and you know, it was starting to leak and that causes the connections inside the junction boxes to corrode and they just had to be replaced. So I've gone around and done all of them. Now on the property we, uh, we have 50 solar panels installed, oh, actually probably 52 to be honest and they're quite large and they pack a bit of a punch. Now with all those solar panels you'd think we'd be independent of power but that's not actually the case. We, we have about 99% uptime which is not as good as the uh, mains electricity grid which is usually in the, I don't know, high 99% um, reliability. What that means in reality is that three or four days every year the the clouds are so low and so thick and this is usually during winter around the winter solstice that they don't produce enough energy to actually ch recharge the batteries and generally that comes on the back of a couple of days of similar sort of weather and then you find yourself running the generator and that's how it rolls. Anyway, let's go and have a look at one of these junction boxes. So each of the solar panel arrays has a distribution box. Now the reason I do that is because I try and keep the voltage low so as to stay under the regulations because if in this state of Victoria if the voltage goes above 100 or 110 volts DC you have to get a licensed electrician in to do all the work and it's going to cost me a fortune so I'd rather do the work myself because I know what I'm doing. Now solar panels put out about 40 volts DC and all these ones do anyway and what happens is I have a 48 volt DC system and you take two panels together and that outputs 80 volts DC but by the time it gets to the batteries that's 48 volts DC so what happens is the batteries bring that voltage down and you actually need to send voltage from high voltage to low voltage that's why people get electrocuted because we are low voltage a lot of other things are higher voltage and the voltage will just run straight through you these panels can give you quite a tingle so what goes on in the the distribution box is that the solar panels cables come in via these cable glands and they run in there and there's two wires it's really quite simple there's a positive wire and a negative wire the, pos the, the positive wires are all fused they're all individually fused and that's what all these things are along the bottom and those are really quite clever fuses they're high rupture current fuses very industrial and to release them you just take it out it's really quite simple and that is a specifically that is a fuse specifically designed for solar power and what's interesting about these things is that they contain sand inside them so in in here is sand so what happens is if the fuse breaks at any point in the in, inside that the sand will actually dampen down the arc because what can happen with DC electricity is that the fuse can break and the, DC, the voltage 
just still all the um, electricity just still jumps across like it, and it'll produce a little arc the sand stops it now I've used and trialed cheaper fuses and you know they fail I've had so much dramas with fuses over the years that I now stick to probably these which is probably some of the better ones and they're super easy just bang them back into the system and you put them in and there's one fuse for every positive cable so what that means is if there's a problem in any one panel it won't take out the entire array which will leave you stranded in um in the middle of weird because it usually happens in the middle of winter that you're going to have a problem and all those all those cables connect into these big chunks of copper and there's two of them there's one for positive and one of them for negative and that collects all of the electricity and then it sends it into these much larger cables and those cables take it up to the house into the battery room super easy this stuff is really basic but um you know with this sort of technology you really want to keep it fundamental simple repairable just so that it's easy to fix up thanks very much for watching see you all next week